Good morning, everyone. I have got the TOG summary of the January 2022 summarised for you. There's about seven articles in this, and I have tried to pick up the most important points um, that I think would be essential for the MRCOG um, exam. So please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and also share it with your friends and colleagues so they can all benefit from this important learning. So the first article is um, female sexual dysfunction. So the key content for this article is female sexual dysfunction, uh, shortened to FSD, is defined as any uh, sexual uh, complaint or problem resulting from disorders of desire, arousal, orgasm or sexual pain that causes marked distress or um, interpersonal difficulty. Various gynecological problems such as pelvic or organ prolapse and endometriosis affect sexual function and this impacts on their treatment. Management often requires the need to address different uh, components of the sexual dysfunction. Women with uh, women, women wish to keep their options relating to sexual function open um, well past uh, the menopause and more women are presenting in late life with female sexual dysfunction. So the definition is the problem must be present for more than 75% of the time for more than six months causing significant distress. The acronym LOFTY, Listening, Observing, Feelings, Thinking and Interpreting, assesses sexual problems in women attending with underlying uh, psychosexual problems. Up to 50% of women presenting with urogynecological problems report female sexual dysfunction. So categories of female sexual dysfunction, so um, diagnostic and statistical manual of, of mental disorders, classifies it to four and, and, and five, so DSM-4 and DSM-5. So DSM-4 is decide, des, desire disorder, so hypoactive sexual desire disorder, sexual uh, aversion disorder, arousal disorders, orgasm disorder, sexual pain disorders uh, like dyspareunia, pelvic pain with intercourse, vaginismus, um, pelvic floor muscle spasm, leading to pain and obstruction with, pen with penetration. DSM-5 is desire and arousal disorder. Merged desire and arousal into single category deleted uh, sexual aversion disorder. And DSM-5 is a female orgasm disorder and genital pelvic pain and penetration disorder, merged dyspareunia and vaginismus. So clinical assessment of female sexual dysfunction, so you take a history, you want to find out the medical history, the current medications, obstetric history, systems review, psychiatric um, history, social circumstances, current life stresses, history of sexual abuse and female um, genital mutilation. Examination is general examination with uh, particular attention to vascular and neurological symptoms. Um, inspection for vulvar pathology, specul exa speculum examination to inspect a condition of vagina and cervix and assess for prolapse. Gentle uh, biomanual examination to elicit um, tender points and uh, scarring um, assess for pelvic mass. Assess um, pelvic flow tone, um, cotton bud evaluation um, of the vestibule for uh, local tenderness if uh, indicated by history. Investigations include FSH or estradiol if symptoms of deficiency and not known to be menopausal. Free um, androgen index and sex hormone binding globulin, thyroid function tests, prolactin if amenorrhic or gal galacturia. Uh, ferritin if features are suggestive of iron deficiency, test for hyperlipidemia and diabetes if indicated by uh, clinical assessment, sexual health screen if indicated. So what are the causes of female sexual dysfunction? So divided into medical, pelvic disorders, vulval disorders and hormonal and psychological. So medical are uh, cardiovascular, so um, atherosclerosis, uh, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, peripheral vascular disease, diabetes, heart failure, neurological is spinal cord injury, stroke, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, diabetic neuropathy, endocrine is thyroid disease, uh, hyperprolactinemia, adrenal insufficiency, hypopituitarism, gastrointestinal is inflammatory bowel disease, um, faecal incontinence, irritable bowel syndrome, liver failure, rheumatological is uh, inflammatory arthritis, systemic lupus, erythematosus, miscellaneous is breast cancer and chronic kidney disease. Pelvic disorders include gynecological, so prolapse, fibroids, endometriosis, sexually transmitted infections, gynecological cancers, precancer, infertility, childbirth, congestion, sorry, congenital um, malurin uh, anomalies, previous gynecological um, surgery, urological is overactive bladder, stress urinary incontinence, urological cancer, functional is vaginismus, uh, chronic pelvic pain, and painful bladder um, syndrome. Vulval disorders is um, uh, vulvovaginal atrophy, lichen sclerosis or planus, 
uh, systemic uh, um, dermatosis, dermatosis affecting um, the vulva, sexually transmitted infections, female genital mutilation, previous vulval surgery, hormonal is premenstrual syndrome, pregnancy, breastfeeding, premature ovarian failure, and menopause. Um, and uh, then we move on to psychological, which is age, uh, obesity, smoking, alcohol, drug misuse, um, socio socioeconomic class, uh, relationship difficulties, uh, mental health problems, depression, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, sexual abuse, uh, traumatic uh, memories, negative body image and depressive um, societal um, stereotypes. OK. Um, so screening questions for assessment of female sexual dysfunction. Um, screening question, do you have any concerns regarding your sex life? Are you currently sexually active? Uh, if the answer is no, ask, is that related to your current health problems? Are there problems with sexual desire, libido, sexual arousal, including a vaginal lubrication problems, orgasm? Um, assess for desire arousal disorder, assess for female orgasm disorder. Are you experiencing any pain related to intercourse, penetration or deep pelvic? Assess for genital urinary sy syndrome of uh, menopause, um, vulval dermatosis, pelvic floor muscle dysfunction, pelvic um, pathology. If anything changes, feel free to ask in the future. Give permission to patient to uh, broach the subject in future consultations. Drug therapy for female um, sexual dysfunction, so vasodilators um, like uh, sildenafil, so Viagra, increases availability of cystic uh, gonadine monophosphate, which um, mediates vascular smooth muscle relaxation via nitric oxide signaling, resulting in genital um, engorgement. Evidence of sildenafil is mixed, has been shown to be beneficial in FSD, secondary to spinal cord injury, and SSRI use. Large RCT of women with sexual arousal disorder reported no benefit, not licensed for, fex for female sexual dysfunction. Other vasodilator is L-arginine, uh, prostaglandins, um, fento fentolamine, and vas vasoactive intestinal peptide. All currently under investigation, no definitive evidence to support use at present. Other drug is dopamine agonist, so you've got your um, bupropion, um, epimorphine, uh, carbagoline. Um, so act centrally to influence uh, behavioral states. Give the central uh, action um, of these drugs. There is a high occurrence of side effects such as nausea, vomiting and headaches. Dopamine agonists are effective in improving desire in women with hypoactive uh, desire disorder. Carbagoline can improve FSD secondary to antipsychotic induced hypoprolactinemia. Um, Bupropion uh, can help uh, female sexual dysfunction related to SSRI use and sublingual intranasal epimorphine is currently under investigation. The hope will be a quicker um, acting and associated with fewer side effects. Other class of drugs is serotonin um, 1A agonist or 2A antagonist. So example is um, flebanserin. Mechanism is act central to influence mood and behavioral states. Um, so um, FDA approved from 2015 for treatment of hyperactive sexual disorder, although a systemic, a systemic, a systematic review showed um, Minimal or no improvement in symptoms and a high rate of adverse side effects, including dizziness, fatigue and nausea. Much abst must abstain, abstain from alcohol to avoid hypotension, syncope, not licensed in the UK. The other class is muscle relaxant, uh, so tenazidine, centrally act, uh, active alpha-2 agonist used as a muscle relaxant, superior to placebo in treating high tone pelvic floor dysfunction. So lifestyle modifications uh, like weight loss, smoking cessation, reduction in alcohol consumption, establishing a healthy diet and a regular exercise uh, or with health, non-pharmacological non treatments like physiotherapy, um, vaginal dilators, self-stimulation and devices, cognitive behavioral therapy, sex therapy, psychosexual counseling, yoga, relaxation techniques and hypnotherapy. So medical therapies we already talked about. So surgical is things like genetic, uh, genital cosmetic surgery, vestibular vestibulectomy, um, Fenton's procedure, genital reconstruction surgery like Botox injections to the pelvic floor muscle and use of lasers. 
Okay, next talk is cervical cancer in pregnancy, diagnosis, staging, and treatment. Cervical cancer is the most common gynecological malignancy diagnosed in pregnancy. Cancer symptoms may uh, mimic uh, complications of uh, pregnancy, thus uh, delaying uh, diagnosis. Um, staging of cervical cancer in pregnancy is essential to determine uh, an individual management plan. Treatment of cervical cancer in pregnancy is complex and depends on the stage of cancer and the gestation of the of the pregnancy. Involvement of MDT team is essential in the care of women with um, cervical ca um, cancer in pregnancy. So commonest gynecological malignancy diagnosed in, in pregnancy, routine recall and test of cure smear test in pregnancies can be deferred until three months after delivery. Pregnancy itself is not a contraindication to a smear test. Pregnancy in itself does not influence cervical lesions and progression of pre-invasive pre disease to invasive disease during pregnancy. And it's rare between 0 to 0.4%. Owing to the minimal risk to the fetus of um, in pregnancy, the British Thoracic Society recommends an X-ray of the thorax um, for the same indications and as a non-pregnant woman. So stage 1a1 cancer may be treated with a colon biopsy. Optimum gestation for treatment is between 14 and 20 weeks. Women should be encouraged and supported to aim for vaginal birth if there are no obstetric and contraindications. Gold standard treatment for stage 1b1 and 1b2 cervical cancer is radical hysterectomy and bilateral salpingectomy with or without bilateral oophorectomy dependent on future fertility wishes with bilateral pelvic lymphadenectomy. Progression of pre-invasive to invasive disease, as we said, during pregnancies is quite rare. Antenatal trachelectomy um, leads to high risk of preterm delivery, which is between 20 and 30 percent. Stage 1b2, less than 22 weeks of gestation, so let's all radical trachelectomy may not be effective because of size of the tumour. For women who wish to continue with the pregnancy, uh, chemotherapy may help to shrink and manage the disease, um, although um, chemotherapy can only be given after the first trimester. If the patient uh, opts for termination, then radical hysterectomy and pelvic lymph um can be done. Stage 1b2, uh, over 22 weeks of gestation, so allow time for fetal maturation. Um, you can give chemotherapy in the, in the interim, delivery by cesarean section at an appropriate gestation, radical hysterectomy and pelvic lymph node dissection. Um, if women choose for no um, a chemotherapy, then just an observational approach until de delivery when surgical treatment can be undertaken. Stage 1b3 and above, uh, again, chemotherapy um, can be used um, once the fetus is mature, delivery by a lower segment cesarean section um, would be followed by either a surgery or radical chemoradiation, um, depending on the initial stage and response to chemotherapy treatment. Women with advanced met metastatic disease have a poor prognosis. The intention of treatment at this stage bec becomes palliative with the aim of controlling the disease um, rather than curing it. Chemotherapy is contraindicated in the first trimester of pregnancy, interferes with organogenesis um, and has been associated with 10 to 10, 20 percent risk of major malformation. Routine recall and test of cure smears in pregnancy can be deferred into three months post delivery. Pregnancy is not a contraindication to smear test. Follow up after, tre after, after treatment of CGN or CIN 2 and 3 with involved or uncertain margins. Cytology should not be delayed until after pregnancy. So this is the staging of a cervical cancer, this FIGO 2018 classification. So stage one is carcinoma is strictly confined to the cervix. Um, and this is stage 1A, where um, inv invasive carcinoma that can be diagnosed only by microscopy with maximum depth of invasion less than five millimeters. 1A1 is a measured stromal invasion of less than three millimeters in depth. 1A2 is measured stromal invasion greater than or equal to three millimeters and less than five millimeters in depth. Um, stage 1b is invasive carcinoma with measured um, deepest invasion of greater than or equal to 5 millimeters. Stage 1b1 is invasive carcinoma greater than or equal to 5 millimeters stromal invasion and less than 2 centimeters in greatest dimension. 1b2 is um, invasive carcinoma greater than or equal to 2 centimeters and less than 4 centimeters in greatest dimension. 1b3 is invasive carcinoma greater than 4 centimeters in greater in greatest dimension. Stage 2 is carcinoma invades beyond the uterus but has not extended into the lower one third of the vagina or to the pelvic wall. Um, what, 2A is involvement limited to the upper two thirds of the vagina without parametrial involvement. 2A1 is invasive carcinoma less than four centimeters. 2A2 is invasive carcinoma greater than or equal to four centimeters. Um, 2B is with parametrial involvement, but not up to the pelvic wall. 
Stage three is um, the carcinoma involves the lower third of the vagina and or extends to the pelvic wall and or causes hydronephrosis or non-functioning um, kidney and or involves pelvic and or paraortic lymph nodes. Three A is carcinoma involves the lower third of the vagina with no extension to the pelvic wall. Um, 3B is extension to the pelvic wall and or hydronephrosis or non-functioning kidney unless known to be due to another cause. 3C is involvement of pelvic and or paraortic lymph nodes um, irrespective of tumor size and extent. 3C1 is pelvic lymph node uh, metastases only. 3C2 is paraortic lymph node metastases. Stage 4 is carcinoma is extended beyond the true pelvis or has involved um, um, the mucosa of the bladder or the rectum, a bullous edema um, as such does not, perm does not permit a case to be um, alerted to stage 4. 4A is spread to the, of the growth uh, to adjust adjacent organs and 4B is spread to distant organs. So after colposcopy, clinical examination, MRI and or ultrasound and biopsy, diagnosis will be either made as 1A2, 1B1, 1B2 or 1B3. So if it's 1A2, 1B1, less than 22 weeks, then pelvic load, no, lymph node dissection should be done. If this is positive, then termination of pregnancy. If it's negative, then um, uh, simple uh, trachelectomy or delayed treatment after um, delivery. Um, similarly, if it's uh, over 22 weeks, again, uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy or tr delayed treatment after uh, delivery um, should be offered. 1B2, less than 22 weeks, um, if pelvic lymph node dissection is positive, then termination of pregnancy. Um, if less than tw 22 weeks and they had uh, new adjuvant chemo and pelvic lymph node is negative, then new adjuvant chemo or, del or delayed treatment after delivery. If it's more than 22 weeks, um, then new, ad uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy or delayed treatment after delivery. If it's 1B3, less than 22 weeks, then new adjuvant chemo or termination of pregnancy. If greater than 22 weeks, then new adjuvant chemo or delayed treatment after delivery. Recommendations for systemic treatment and supportive uh, medication for patients undergoing uh, a cancer treatment in pregnancy. Dosing of chemotherapeutic drugs during pregnancy should be based on actual weight. The same dose per meter square or dose per kilogram um, square should be used as uh, in non-pregnant patients. Chemotherapy is contraindicated in the first trimester of gestation to avoid interference with organogenesis. Fetal benefit of treatment and delay should be balanced against maternal risk. After 14 weeks of gestation, administration of, se of several uh, anti-cancer drugs is feasible, including uh, taxanes, platinum agents, um, anthracyclines, um, etoposide, uh, and bleomycin. Chemotherapy is not recommended beyond 35 weeks of gestation. It is important to give a three-week window between the last cycle of the chemotherapy and delivery to allow both maternal and fetal um, bone marrow to recover. Until safety um, data is available, target therapies should be avoided during pregnancy. Metoclopramide FHT3 uh, antagonists, uh, renitidine uh, proton pump inhibitors, um, methyl prednisolone, prednisolone or hydrocortisone um, can be used uh, if necessary. Recommendations for psychosocial um, caregivers treating pre pregnant cancer patients and their families. Psychologists should, uh, should be included in the interdisciplinary team of the caregivers for pregnant cancer patients. Counselling should be offered to both the affected uh, women and her partner. Extensive education should be provided about the necessary medical steps and their implications on the outcome of the pregnancy and the long-term effects on, on the physical and the cognitive health of the offspring. Contact with other families who um, have exp experienced cancer during pregnancy should be encouraged because this might help patients and their families to cope more easily with their own emotions, thoughts and concerns. In gynecological cancers, hysterectomy and bilateral salpingiorectomy can be performed. Thus, the interdisciplinary team should be aware of the possible psychological effects of this surgery, including depression, loss of sexual pleasure and future childbearing ability. Right, accessory cavitated uh, uterine malformation, an unfamiliar cause of dysmenorrhea. Key content is um, accessory cavitated uh, uterine malformations are isolated um, cavitated lesions within the lateral aspect of the myometrium uh, inferior to the attachment of the round ligament. They, uh, they are a rare Mullerian anomaly and are increasingly recognized as a cause for severe dysmenorrhea and pelvic pain. Um, 
Accessory uh, cavitated uterine malformations can be diagnosed with ultrasound and magnetic resonance imaging, where they appear as a, a well-defined lesion with a central cavity um, containing hemorrhagic uh, content surrounded by a myometrial uh, mantle. On histological examination, the cavity is uh, lined by a functional um, endometrial gland and stroma. Recognized treatments include uh, hormonal um, suppression, um, destruction of the endometrial lining by alcohol sclerotherapy or complete uh, surgical excision, which has a demonstrated um, curative results. Diagnostic criteria for um, ACUMs, uh, as this is shortened to location, solitary lesion located in the lateral myometrium or broad ligament, no, cumul uh, no communication with uterine uh, cavity or fallopian tubes, morphology, a cavitated lesion containing functional endometrium surrounded by a my myometrial mantle, histology, cavitated lesions filled with uh, dark brown hemorrhagic content lined with functional endometrium, uh, myometrial uh, mantle has... Um, concentric uh, organization of smooth muscle. Differences between ACOMs and true cystic uh, adenomyomas. So characteristics, um, so, uh, demo so demographics, um, so ACOMs tend to um, affect younger nulliparous women, true cystic adenomyomas tend to affect older multiparous women. The clinical presentation with ECMs is severe menstrual pain and no association with heavy periods. With true cystic adenomyomas, it's heavy, painful periods. Um, with ACMs, um, it tends to be isolated lesions, whereas with true cystic adenomyomas, it's usually found alongside with other features of adenomyosis. With ACMs, there's distinct border between myometrial mantle and surrounding myometrium. With true cystic adenomyomas, there's irregular and poorly defined borders. With ACMs, the histopathology findings uh, microscopically are concentric um, organization of smooth muscle around cavity, endometrial glands, and stroma seen in uh, to line um, cavity. With true cystic adenomyomas, uh, surrounding myometrium lacks organization uh, and its absence of internal epithelial lining of cystic cavity. ACMs location is in the lateral myometrium inferior to the uh, insertion of the round ligament and separate and distinct from the endometrial myometrial junction. Variable location within the myometrium, uh, often with or without con um, contig contiguous with um, the endometrial myometrial junction. The so transvaginal sclerotherapy procedure for ECMs perform under um, GA, so general anaesthetic, um, under continuous transvaginal ultrasound guidance, insert an 18 gauge needle um, through the anterior vaginal wall and myometrium into the ECMs, um, aspirate into intracavity fluid, usually due to three mils, and send for cytological analysis. Instill 99% ethanol into the cavity to keep it open. So preconception health in uh, the well. Uh, 40% of all pregnancies are currently unplanned. The diet uh, recommend high in grains and vegetables, reduce the risk of obesity, GDM, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, preeclampsia and maternal anemia. The benefits to the fetus include the prevention of low birth weight, macrosomia, um, preterm birth and stillbirth. So if BMI is more, more than 25, then multiple complications can happen and causes a maternal mortality, such as hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, um, gestation, diabetes, relatives, reduced um, fecundity and increased risk of miscarriage. Interpartum and postpartum period is increased anesthetic risk, lower success um, rates of trial of uh, instrumental delivery and increased risk of infection. Fetal neonatal effects of macrosomia, stillbirth, low birth, weight and congenital anomalies, as well as um, neonatal hyperglycemia, secondary to poor lactation. Obesity uh, adversely affects the, uh, peri per the periconception development conditioning of the embryo, higher concentration of inflammatory cytokines, hormones and metabolites, which can accumulate in ovarian um, follicular fluid and affect oocyte development and maturation. Oocytes from obese women are smaller in size and have increased triglyceride levels. So undernutrition is reported in 20, 10 to 20% of women who are underweight. 20% of maternal deaths and significant risk factors of stillbirth, preterm birth, low birth weight, and SGA, small for gestation age baby. So, so recommend minimum aerobic activity of uh, 150 min uh, minutes of moderate intensity um, activity per week or 30 minutes of activity per day or 75 minutes of intense activity per week. Women are recommended to be active on most days of the week with no sessions more than 60 minutes. Strength sessions are recommended twice a week as non on non-consecutive days of one to two sets of 12 to 15 repetitions of each muscle group. 
So health effects following um, chemical exposure and strategies to prevent exposure. So chemical is lead, um, uh, source is paint, soil, water. Uh, impact on health, low levels um, can cause uh, cognitive impairment, high levels can cause aggression and cognitive dysfunction. Uh, prevention strategies, so postpone conception for three to six months following exposure to lead free um, uh, following exposure and uh, we all recommend using uh, lead free paint. Mercury um, is present in ocean fish, a sword fish, um, child deficits in language, attention and memory and anxiety following the fish consumption guidelines uh, from the Food Standard Agency. Carbon monoxide, cigarette smoking, um, faulty gas or heavy uh, appliance, uh, heating appliances, cars with faulty exhausts um, can cause sudden uh, fetal death, neurological deficits, premature birth. Um, so prevention strategy is testing in early pregnancy, smoking cessation of the women and other members in the household, repair or remove any faulty items. Organic pollutants um, from uh, ingestion, inhalation, um, dermal exposure, contaminated uh, food, um, so lower intelligence uh, co co caution, which is uh, IQ, reduced uh, memory in children. Organic pollute, um, pollutants are stored in fat tissue, um, therefore aim to achieve a normal body mass index before pregnancy. So this is uh, maternal and neonatal effects of infections. So cytomegalovirus um, maternal is uh, no, none or mild viral infection. For, ne for neonate, it's hearing loss, visual impairment, learning disabilities, epilepsy, congenital malformation. For toxoplasmosis, none or mild viral infection can cause miscarriage. For neonatal outcomes, none to severe neurological impairment, uh, retinal lesions, uh, congenital malformation, risk of infection increases with gestational age, slash severity decreases with gestation age. Rubella miscarriage can cause miscarriage. Uh, birth defects uh, um, effects um, are severe, less than 16 weeks. Hepatitis B, none in pregnancy, um, long-term risk of liver cancer, um, transmission of uh, hepatitis. HIV, none if the viral load is low, transmission of the disease to the neonate. Zika virus, rash or viral symptoms or headaches uh, to the fetus, to the, sorry, to the neonate, it's microcephaly. Syphilis, primary uh, pain is also sores, secondary uh, widespread rash. If untreated, can cause long-term neurological problems or miscarriage. Stillbirth um, can cause stillbirth, uh, congenital syphilis, skin lesions, failure to thrive, um, seizures, um, hepatosplenomegaly. Um, listeria um, can cause fe fever, viral symptoms, headaches, uh, diarrhea, and vomiting, miscarriage. Fetal and neonatal infections are severe. Stillbirth, preterm uh, birth delivery, uh, case uh, fatality of 20 to 30 percent pneumonia and sepsis with meningitis. So infections and uh, interventions. So if it's cytomegalovirus, um, um, so it says uh, treatable with medications during the preconception period. No vaccines that can be given during uh, conception. None intervention uh, to prevent infection. Education in 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 simple uh, hygiene. Toxoplasmosis or preconception infection uh, treatment is not indicated. Preconception infection um, one month prior to uh, one month after uh, conception. The risk of, of infection is very low. Discussion with an obstetrician regarding risk benefit in performing a diagnostic, diagnostic amniocentesis. Um, there's no, no vaccines and um, interventions to prevent infection. Or avoid undercooked meat. Avoid handling of cat litter. So uh, rubella is uh, there's no again not not needed to be treated before uh, in the preconception period. There's um, there is vaccination the mumps uh, measles and rubella, and there's no in, in uh, intervention to prevent infection. Hepatitis B uh, antivirals to reduce um, viremia preconception. Um, there is vaccination for high risk individuals. Education regarding the transmission of the disease process with lifestyle behavioral um, modifications. Um, HIV antiretrovirals to reduce viremia preconception. There's no vac there's no um, vaccines um, antiretrovirals to lower viremia. Education regarding the transmission of the um, disease with lifestyle and behavioural modifications. Zika there is no no so medications during preconception period. There's no vaccinations. Education regarding transmission of the disease process with health uh, precautions. Syphilis. Um, uh, can be treated with penicillin. Um, there's no vaccines and education regarding transmission of the disease, a process with lifestyle and behavioral modifications. Listeria, not normally required. Again, no treatment required. There's no vaccinations and avoid uh, lunch and uh, meat, hot dogs, unless um, cooked un uh, until um, steaming. Avoid patties, um, 
unpasteurized a wood paint, unpasteurized milk or cheese um with a uh, with mold um find Summary of key areas of concern of, uh, and proposed interventions. So high body mass index, combination of aerobic and strength exercises, minimum amount of aerobic activity, 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity per week or 30 minutes of moderate activity per day or 75 minutes of intense activity per week. Strength sessions twice per week or on non-consecutive days. Nutritional status uh, for folate, iron, uh, zinc levels, folate supplementation rec recommend recommended for a minimum of three months prior to conception after, after 12 weeks. Iron uh, fortification of foods such as flour, rice, sugar, um, juice or soy sauce. Zinc supplementation taken as a preconception tablet. Tobacco use, smoking cessation classes, written handouts, individual counselling. Alcohol use, um, educational uh, strategies to increase awareness. Psychological interventions, pharma pharmaceutical treatment, um, written handouts, infections, pre-pregnancy vaccinations, vaccination during pregnancy, um, education on simple hygiene, lifestyle changes and food to avoid during pregnancy. Right, okay, so pregnancy in underweight women, implications, management and outcomes. Three to four percent of the UK are uh, enter pregnancy underweight, uh, advise uh, um, an increased gestational weight gain of 12.5 to 18 kilograms for underweight women compared with 11.5 to 16 kilograms for normal weight women and five to nine kilograms for obese women. Recommend an extra 200 kilo um, cal, um, so that's calories each day in the third trimester of pregnancy. Causes of low BMI, so it could be constitutional. Um, so this could c consider risk of growth restriction and preterm delivery. Um, should uh, so pregnancy effect on uh, underlying cause? So should gain weight normally? Um, positive uh, effect and body image assessment. Refer to obstetrician. Assess nutritional status. Um, assess eating habits. Assess mental state and well-being. Consider bloods for nutritional screen. Consider growth scans. Malnutrition increased risk of fetal growth restriction and preterm delivery. Also can cause anemia in the mother. Um, and inadequate weight gain. So regular blood counts to assess for anemia, ferritin B12 folate levels, if hemoglobin levels uh, falls to provide adequate and appropriate replacement. Refer to dietitian, consider uh, fortified drinks and multivitamins. Um, screen for vitamin D deficiency and consider appropriate uh, supplementation. Weight uh, at regular intervals during the pregnancy to confirm weight gain and, and offer growth scans. Eating disorders, um, so growth restriction risk uh, again in the baby and potential risk of um, microcephaly in toddlers. All um, the associations with malnutrition, so basically anemia and inadequate weight gain. Observe for keeping urine, consider renal and uh, liver profiles if a um, suspicion of laxative abuse or forced um, emesis. Uh, suspected higher risk of osteopenia, high, uh, risk of hyperkalemia, hypokalemic alkalosis with acute kidney injury if severe. Uh, purging and forced emesis. Regular weighing during the pregnancy, growth scans, consider referral to eating disorder specialist or perinatal mental health team. Dietitian referral and nutritional um, supplementation refer for an, to an anaesthetic review. Ensure drug doses are adjusted depending on weight at the time of prescribing. Refer and recommend bone scan once breastfeeding is complete. Communicate concerns with GP. So, um, cause of low BMI could also be malignancy, uh, possible growth restriction, iatrogenic preterm delivery, adva advanced disease if treatment not considered or declined uh, because of pregnancy, difficulty um, investigating and managing malignancy, full blood count, renal and liver profiles, tumor markers depending on suspected malignancy, ultrasound, CT, MRI, P PET scan, multidisciplinary team and specialist um, surgical oncology involvement, uncontrolled hyperthyroidism, can cause fetal growth restriction, um, IUD, which is intrauterine um, death, um, preeclampsia, miscarriage, preterm, labour and delivery. So treat in conjunction with maternal medicine or endocrine specialist and offer growth scan. Investigators for low BMI, so you would offer baseline tests for low BMI, so full blood count, renal profile, uh, bone profile, liver profile, in absence of anemia, uh, ferritin, vitamin B12, folic acid uh, level should be checked, low threshold for vitamin D, low um, low potassium, ECG, plus or minus chest x-ray, risk of cardiac arrhythmia, BMI is less than 13, consider regular weight um, weight. Uh, Measurement minimum each uh, once each trimester or uh, monthly. Urinalysis, ketonuria may suggest purging and forced emesis or starvation. Uh, arterial or venous blood gas, look for alkalosis, high pH and low potassium. Uh, postnatal bone scan, um, consider suggesting uh, this to GP beyond three months. Postnatal to assess bone density and risk of continuing osteopenia and osteoporosis. 
So post clinical care for uh, so presentation low booking BMI but appropriate weight gain in pregnancy expected neonatal uh, birth weight uh, is most likely in normal range level of postnatal care normal postnatal care if low BMI uh, and malignancy uh, likely normal neonatal birth weight support from uh, primary care and multidisciplinary team managing cancer diagnosis um, support breastfeeding until cancer treatment uh, makes um, unattainable. Low BMI and eating disorders increase risk of low birth weight. Um, enhanced uh, postnatal support, such as early intervention, uh, intervention health visiting, assist for breastfeeding, observe for deterioration of mental health, particularly obsessive compulsive disorder slash postnatal depression. Um, risk of uh, resurgence of uh, eating disorders. Consider a uh, MARF to social care early uh, intervention um, with health visitor multi-agency referral that's MAR so consider a multi-agency referral to social care um, slash early intervention of health visitor low BMI and malnutrition increase risk of low birth weight um, so multi-agency referral to social care slash involve no um, recourse uh, service if applicable early intervention health visiting provide supple supplements and vitamins and fortified drink communicate concerns to primary care uh, postnatal depression related to social complexity so investigation and management of uh, postcoital bleeding. Uh, postcoital bleeding is a common gynecological symptom affecting up to 9% of women. One in 44,000 women aged between 20 to 24 and one in 2,400 women aged between 45 to 54 will have cervical cancer. Causes of postcoital bleeding can be divided into benign, infective, vulval, malignancy, other. So, urogenital atrophy, uh, benign vascular tumors of the genital tract, uh, cervical endometrial polyps, cervical atropine, cervical endometriosis, uh, vulval vaginitis, secondary to candiditis or trichomonas, uh, cervicitis, secondary to chlamydia or gonorrhea, endometritis in presence of intrauterine um, coil, insert, uh, coil device. Vulval dermatosis, gentle warts, gentle ulcers, syphilis, lymph uh, lymphogranuloma, venerum, malignancy, vulval cancer, vaginal cancer, cervical cancer, endometrial cancer, other like trauma, gentle piercing, bleeding disorders, foreign bodies, um, sexual abuse, um, pregnancy related uh, uh, bleeding, or female genital mutilation. Indications for referral to secondary care, so women presenting with symptoms of cervical cancer, example, un unexplained postcoital bleeding or persistent vaginal discharge, urgency referrals within two weeks, abnormal appearance of the cervix or vagina uh, on a speculum examination, then again, referral urgency is within two weeks. So postcoital bleeding, you take a history and do a physical examination, you do some microbiology swabs to rule out infection, and if there's infection, then you send the patient to gum or and, and for contract tracing, and also treat it uh, with um, antibiotics cervical screening test if overdue then if abnormal result then refer to colposcopy if clinically abnormal looking cervix and also refer to colposcopy if normal cervix but persistent postcoital bleeding or coexisting intermestal bleed consider transvaginal ultrasound plus or minus papal biopsy plus or minus hysteroscopy so h-a-r-k questions to screen for intimate partner violence so it stands for humiliation afraid um, rape and kick have you uh, been humiliated or emotionally abused in other ways by your partner or ex-partner? Have you been afraid of your partner or ex-partner? Have you been raped or forced to have any kind of sexual activity by your partner or ex-partner? Have you been kicked, hit, slapped or otherwise physically hurt by your uh, partner or ex-partner? Recommended antibiotic regime for the treatment of pelvic inflammatory disease. Um, so in outpatient setting, I am uh, keftraxone, one gram, a single dose, plus oral doxycycline, 100 milligrams twice, uh, twice daily for 14 days, plus metronidazole, 400 milligrams twice daily for 14 days, um, or, or, or a, um, oflexin, uh, 400 milligrams twice daily for 14 days, plus oral metronidazole, twice, um, 400 milligrams twice daily for 14 days, or oral uh, moxifloxacin, 400 milligrams once daily for 14 days. Inpatient intravenous keftraxone 2 grams daily plus intravenous or oral doxycycline 100 milligrams twice daily until 24 hours after clinical improvement, followed by oral doxycycline 100 milligrams twice daily for 14 days plus oral metronidazole 400 milligrams twice daily for 14 days, or intravenous clindamycin 900 milligrams three times a day, um, plus intravenous gentamicin 2 milligrams per kilogram, loading dose followed by 1.5 milligram per kilogram three times a day until 24 hours after clinical improvement, followed by oral clindamycin 450 milligrams, milligrams four times a day or 
oral doxycycline 100 milligrams twice daily for 14 days plus oral metronazole 400 milligrams twice daily for 14 days so i would really just suggest that you do pay attention to the slide because i do remember that in the exam um there were some um different regimes given for uh for you know for choosing the answer for the correct uh, antibiotic treatment and if and, and, it, and it wasn't the commonest things that you use like doxy and metro because that you would know from your clinical practice but it was stuff like cipro and ofloxacin and all these kind of um different um antibiotics that you that we weren't so used to using and we had to choose the right dose and 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 also the regimen for it so so do do pay attention and learn all the um, different uh, regimes that you can um, to treat PID. 50% of women presenting to primary care with postcoital bleeding will have no obvious underlying cause. Um, reassure that 60% uh, will have a spontaneous resolution of symptoms within six months. Well, that's it. Um, that's seven TOG articles done um, in, 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 an, in about 40 minutes. Uh, I hope you found this useful. And if you did, then please, please do give it a, like, a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And leave a comment uh, below to tell me how useful this was for you. And also share it with your friends and colleagues so they can all benefit from this. And let me know in the comment section if you want a uh, copy of the slides so you can leave your email address. Um, in the comment section and also if you want any topics to be covered and you want videos on it then please do let me know.